or I can go ahead and do it, Mary. Um, and uh, members, if if there's an alternate sitting in for a member, please just let us know when we call the member's name. Um, so Dan Burke from CDOT. Present. Great. Um, myself from uh, CMATH is present. John Donovan from Federal Highway. Present. Uh, Sis Killen representing the county. Um, Heather Mullins representing RTA. Hi, it's Michael Horsting attending for Heather. Okay, we've got Michael Horsting sitting in. Um, Kevin O'Malley from CDOT. Okay, I'll be sitting in for Kevin today. He's off. Great. So Grant Davis sitting in for Kevin. Chad Little from IDOT. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Rockingham. Here. Mayor Shelke. Here. Uh, Jeff Shriver from CDOT. Present. And Mayor Williams. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on to the next item, agenda changes and announcements. Um, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that as permitted by the governor's disaster declaration of January 8th, 2021, the determination has been made that an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent for this committee. To ensure that the meeting is as transparent as possible, staff posted the meeting materials one week in advance, and we will provide a recording of this meeting linked on our website, and we'll take all votes by roll call. Um, I also want to remind everyone on a virtual meeting setting to please mute yourself when you're not speaking, um, and feel free to um, raise your hand or use the meeting chat box that staff is monitoring. Um, before we get started, um, I did just want to announce that um, going forward, Sis Killen from Cook County's uh, Department of Transportation and Highways uh, will be our new advisory committee, our advisory member representing the counties. Um, uh, with that, are there any agenda changes or announcements from the rest of the committee? Okay. Um, I believe we have our Chief of Staff, Amy, Amy McEwen, with us this morning. Amy, was there anything you wanted to announce? No, thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Amy. Um, hearing nothing else, I will move on to our first item of business, uh, which is our draft minutes of the October 29th, uh, 2020 meeting. Uh, those were included in the meeting materials for your review. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those minutes as presented? Mayor Rockingham, so so approved. Do I have a second? Second by Jeff Shriver. <laughs> Great, thank you, Jeff. Um, all right, I will now conduct a roll call on the minutes. Um, Dan Burke. Uh, myself for CMAP, I. Uh, Dan, 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 Burke, Dan Burke, I apologies, I was muted. That's okay, Dan, thank you. Um, Grant Davis? Aye. Mayor Rockingham? Aye. Mayor Schelke? Aye. And Jeff Shriver? Aye. Great, thank you. The motion carries. Um, our first item of business this morning is a summary of shared fund applications and Mary Weber will now provide that summary. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mary Weber, and I'm an assistant analyst at CMAP. I'm going to walk through a brief summary of our 2021 call for projects, focusing on projects requesting STP funds. In total, we received 121 applications, these applications have a combined total cost of over $3 billion and are requesting a total of over $1.7 billion in federal CMAC, STP, and or TAP funds. We received 61 applications from projects requesting STP shared funds. 17 of these projects also requested additional funding from CMAC and or TAP. These applications have a combined total for all phases and fund sources of 1.4 billion. They are requesting a total of 534 million, 
which includes 3.5 million in transportation development credits. These 61 projects fall within the boundaries of 65 different municipalities with 14 projects located in more than one municipality. DMAP staff is still working through eligibility determinations. Thus far, nine projects have been deemed ineligible due to not meeting the minimum cost, phase one engineering, and or inclusion in plans criteria. As of yesterday, we are waiting on responses to follow-up questions and requests for additional information regarding eligibility criteria from applicants on about a half dozen projects. This chart shows the 41 unique sponsors broken down into four groups. As you can see, over 75% of the sponsors are municipalities. This chart shows the applications broken down into three major location groups. The 61 applications are represented by 64 different locations. There are three projects located in both the city of Chicago and suburban Cook. Here we are showing suburban project location counts. As noted on the bottom of the slide, two projects are in both Will and Cook, one project is in both DuPage and Kane, and one is in both Grundy and Will. This slide details the distribution of applications across the different project types. Road reconstructions are the most frequent application type with 36 applications. We did receive at least three applications for every project type. You'll notice that these counts add up to way more than the 61 applications. This is because half of the applicants requested consideration under more than one project type. In fact, 16 applicants requested consideration under three or more application types. This slide details amount requests by phase. As expected, most of the requested funding is for construction, but all phases had some level of request. And finally, I mentioned earlier that 534 million was, was requested. Those requests were spread across all five fiscal years as shown here. Also noted for each year is the amount of funding requested for each phase. For example, of the 36 million requested in 2022, 9 million was requested for engineering phases, 6 million for land acquisition, and 19 million for construction or implementation. That concludes that brief presentation. For additional information about the call for projects, you can visit the webpage listed above or contact me via email. And if there are any questions right now, Kama and I can answer those. Um, thanks, Mary. Are there any questions from any members of the committee? Any members of the audience that wish to ask a question? All right. Well, I'd like to just add a quick thank you to all of the applicants throughout the region for submitting applications, as well as a Thank you to the planning liaisons and programming staff at our partner agencies for assisting those applicants. Um, staff is really looking forward to digging into the details of the applications and completing the scoring. We'll also be forwarding a list of all eligible projects to the councils and CDOT uh, later this afternoon or tomorrow morning so that each can determine their five highest priority projects for the sub-regional priority scoring criteria. Um, once all of that scoring is complete, draft scores will be made available for applicant review and staff will present a recommended program of projects to the committee at our next meeting in July. Okay, next on our agenda um, is the shared fund status update. Um, Elliot Lewis is here with us today to provide an overview of the current status of active and contingency projects. Thank you, Kama. Good morning, everybody. Um, yes, so as noted in the agenda, the uh, Quarterly updates from January are included in the agenda packet. The March quarterly updates are in the process of uh, being reviewed. Uh, those were due yesterday, so uh, 
in a couple of weeks, once those are processed and reviewed, those will be posted to the site. Uh, did want to make a note of some of the changes that we're aware of so far. Uh, in January, CTA requested several reprogramming actions for the Austin Green Line Station project to better align with the FTA grant approval process, uh, including withdrawing construction phase in fiscal year 21 and engineering phase in fiscal year 22, and seeking cost increases for uh, engineering phase programmed in fiscal year 21 and the construction phase programmed in fiscal year 22. Um, all total, these changes were revenue neutral within the active program. And that FTA grant approval occurred this past Monday, the 29th. Also approved this past Monday on the 29th, the FTA grant approval for the CTA's Harlem Bus Bridge Project engineering phase. Uh, both of these projects previously had their obligation deadlines extended to March 31st. Uh, some other projects that also had extended obligation deadlines uh, included Aurora's East New York Street Projects construction phase. Uh, it was authorized in advanced construction for the April state letting. Uh, the authorization was $80 higher than the program funding. Uh, so staff granted an $80 increase, cost increase for that phase. Uh, also the right-of-way phases for Plainfield's 143rd Street extension project and Barrington's US Route 14 grade separation project also had extended deadlines. The final approvals needed for IDOT to make the obligation request to FHWA have been obtained and those requests are in process. Finally, the phase one engineering for the Burnham Avenue grade separation project also had an extended obligation deadline of March 31st. Agreements were submitted to IDOT in August of 2020 and have not been approved yet. An additional three month extension has been granted per the active program management policies which allow for an automatic extension when obligation does not occur solely due to agreement processing provided that the agreement was submitted in a timely manner. Uh, other than that, I don't have any further updates. Thank you, Elliot. Are there any questions on the shared fund status update? Going once. All right. Um, Moving on then to item six, our regional accounting update. Um, as we've reached the halfway point in the second year of the shared fund implementation and the first year of our local program implementation, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to walk the committee through our regional accounting of those funds. Our active program management policies are focused on the timely obligation of the region's federal funds and encourage continuous review and adjustment of our programs to help accomplish this. The policies also include measures to redistribute unobligated funds to projects that are ready to obligate in order to avoid building up large balances of funding. Staff is continually monitoring and tracking programming and project implementation activity and has developed the summary that was included in your packet for reporting current status. Uh, the summary includes the funding available and programmed at the beginning of each federal fiscal year, changes to both throughout the year, obligation of funds and end of year carryover and redistribution actions. Uh, for the sake of brevity in presenting this information, all of the councils and CDOT local programs are shown together under the all councils heading. However, these values are being tracked by each individual council. Uh, the current federal fiscal year is the mo de most detailed information and will change frequently throughout the year. Um, data for subsequent years of the programs are uh, really just projections. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up a, a zoomed in copy of the report so that we can walk uh, kind of quickly through where we're at in fiscal year 2021. Um, you can see at the start of the year, uh, the programming mark was about 77.6 million, uh, with 40 million of that being the year's uh, new allotment and 37.6 million that was carried forward with the project phases that were granted obligation deadline extensions. Um, at the beginning of the year, we had over $77 million programmed and about $351,000 unprogrammed. As we've moved through the year, we've had some changes. Um, for example, Elliot noted earlier that CTA withdrew the construction phase of a project. Uh, that is shown here as moved out of FY 2021. CTA also requested a cost increase on the engineering uh, phase of a project um, that is shown uh, here is a cost change. Um, in this case, the net change is zero, so our revised program amount 
re remains the same now as it was at the beginning of the year. Um, in contrast, across all of the councils in CDOT, um, the net change on projects has been 696,000. Uh, 2.4 million has been moved out of FY21 programs and 8.1 million has been moved into FY21. Um, in the next section, we would record any changes to the funding available. Uh, so that far this year, there have been none. Uh, the last row in this section shows what the current balance of unprogrammed funds is after any changes to the marks or changes to the program. The shared fund hasn't changed. However, you can see that with the programming changes made by councils and CDOT, the unprogrammed balance has been reduced from nearly 9 million at the beginning of the year to about 2.5 million currently unprogrammed. Um, in the obligation section, we're tracking the funds that have been obligated as well as any remainders that have occurred when the amount of funds obligated is less than the amount of funds programmed. Um, this section is also where we'll record the amount of funds associated with projects that are granted obligation deadline extensions later this month or projects that have proceeded without requesting extensions. Um, we'll also use this to track the unprogrammed funds that are not eligible to be carried forward to the next year. Um, finally, the end of the fis federal fiscal year section will document the total amount to be carried over and the total amount to be redistributed for use by any project from the shared fund or local programs in the future. Um, as I said earlier, staff is continually monitoring these programs and projects and updating this report. Um, honestly, there have already been close to a dozen changes just since this was printed for our packet last week. Um, staff isn't going to produce a new report every time there's a change, but as major updates occur, um, such as when we have adjustments to the programming after quarterly status updates are reviewed or um, the addition of obligations that kind of occur in bunches uh, right before construction lettings, then staff will post an updated summary on our STP webpage. Um, at the very least, the summary will be posted quarterly and provided as an informational item at all of this committee's meetings going forward. Um, so that's kind of a, a real quick run through of the accounting that's going on. Again, big thanks go to um, the councils of mayors, planning liaisons, and, and CDOT staff for helping us keep this accounting up to date. Um, so with that, are there any questions from the committee? Um, about the regional accounting. Any questions from anyone in the audience right now? And I see none in the chat box. So, um, you know, feel free anytime to give staff a call or send an email if you do have questions about the accounting. Okay, um, moving on to other business then. We do have a couple items that have come up. Um, first of all, as the STP program has evolved, um, we've done a lot to include our transit partners. In fact, of the nine shared fund project types, two of those are related to transit. Uh, because of this, we'd like to have the FTA participate in our committee meetings as an advisory member going forward. Um, however, because the committee structure, including those advisory members, is defined in the STP agreement between the city and councils, staff wanted to be sure that the committee has no objection to this change to the membership. Um, so if anyone would prefer to discuss this and take formal action to welcome the, the FTA as an advisory member, um, you know, let's please say so now and then we'll schedule it for approval at our July meeting. Um, but if everyone uh, thinks this is a great idea, then we'll, we'll go ahead and welcome the FTA as an advisory member starting with that July meeting. Dan, did you have a thought? Yeah, Kim, I, I don't see any downside. I mean, it seems like there's only a positive to it. I see no downside at all. So, if, I mean, that said, why don't we, I would advocate that we go ahead and welcome them as a committee, as an advisory committee member. Great, thank you. Mayor Schelke, did you want to add something? I don't think I do. do I? Okay, you were unmuted, so I wasn't sure. <laughs> So the more the merrier. Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't. If I hit something, I bet hit it by mistake. I had no intention of uh, <laughs> making any comment at that moment. All right, Chad. I think you said the more the merrier. Thank you. Um, great. I think we actually have Tony Greep from FTA uh, listening in today. So uh, Tony would be the one representing the FTA going forward. So um, 
Tony, was there anything you wanted to say today? Uh, yeah, Kama, thank you. Uh, just just looking forward to working with you all. I work with many of you on other committees, uh, have worked with you in the past. So uh, yeah, FTA really wants to be more engaged, uh, especially, especially as this program has evolved and uh, we see uh, uh, more opportunities in the future. Um, so thank you, Kama. Thank you, CMAP, and looking forward to working with you guys. Thanks, Tony. We're looking forward to it as well. Um, the second item of other business is it was brought to staff's attention uh, about an hour ago that uh, the village of Posen had intended to um, submit an, ap an application for the shared fund, and that application was not submitted. Um, and they, I, I believe, reached out to all of the committee members um, seeking a discussion on whether that application could be accepted late. Um, you know, as I said, staff just heard about this a, a little while ago, um, but our, our initial inclination is um, to request some more time to think about this. We have some concerns about um, whether accepting an application late would violate the uh, Grant Accountability and Transparency Act, the GATA Act. Um, so just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention um, and interested in hearing if the committee um, has any thoughts on that. Mayor Schelke here. I have the, had the opportunity to have that same communication from the Mayor Posen that you just mentioned. I do have some familiarity with that area down there. And I think I can envision in my mind what they're proposing to do. And it would be, I think, an enhancement and certainly a safety in, improvement for that particular part of the region. So I certainly would hope that we could give them some consideration. I, you know, we have to go by our rules, but that is one that I, it sounds like it was some kind of a misunderstanding in line down there as to what the submittal deadline was. So that apparently was what happened, but that is a project that I think should be given some consideration at whatever time we can finally do it. Thank you, Mayor. Anyone else from the committee? Aaron, was there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, if I could for just a minute. I mean, I think one of the things we want to do is we're a little bit hamstrung by the GATA requirements that we have here in terms of accepting things in a timely manner and making sure that they meet those requirements. But I do think that, you know, it it doesn't hurt to evaluate the project, um, even if it isn't able to be part of the program this year and think about how we might help pose in it through other means, especially if they're looking for phase one funding, we might be able to make some connections to other places, for example, Cook County or, you know, looking at other pots of funding that could be available here and provide some advice, advice and advisory roles. So um, we'll certainly take all of those under consideration. Thank you, Aaron. Um, I think if there's there's no additional comments on this, um, as Aaron suggested, it's probably best for staff to go ahead and evaluate the project, but not include it in um, consideration for programming. Um, you know, if if the committee feels strongly that um, we should make a, a change um, to that, I would suggest that we not take that action today since this wasn't noticed on our agenda. And, um, you know, I think we'd need to schedule an additional meeting to discuss it and take action. But um, I think Aaron's plan probably sounds sounds like a good route to go down. Um, go ahead and, and do the technical review. We'll inform the committee of that and, and provide assistance to the village where we can. Sounds good. I see some other heads nodding. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I would, as, as chairman of the council of mayors, certainly I have some role here of trying to represent the cities and all these decision makings. And, you know, this was one that, you know, I think it is probably one that should be done at some point in time. I appreciate the strategy that Aaron just outlined that, you know, we can begin to look at it and let them know that we're 
trying to see how we can fit this in in the days ahead. And I don't know much more that you can ask because, you know, we, we've got all these rules and if we don't maintain them, I could see us being inundated with people wanting to throw things in the last minute or three weeks after the deadline and all this other good stuff. I think we have to maintain some degree of, of uh, understanding as to just when you can and cannot be submitting your projects because to just arbitrarily open it up and let anybody throw anything at us anytime would be uh, a real challenge, certainly for the CMAP staff and would kind of undermine uh, what, when we redid this whole CMAP uh, thing many years ago, that was one of the things we were trying to do was get a better control over how all this was handled and processed and whatever. And the huge degree of success on the part of the current CMAP staff, we've been able to, uh, you know, attain that, I think, momentum and, and monitoring and going forth in a proper way. And so, uh, you know, I haven't heard anybody really criticize this recently because of the, you know, sloppy ways or way we were doing stuff. Everybody, I think, has come to a recognition that a CMAP is a tried and true professionally run organization. It, it follows its rules and it understands that, you know, there may be some things that we need to shake and bend a little bit, but at the same time, we want to keep ourselves on track by the guidelines and the, pro and the programs and processes that have been set up in the region to process all this stuff. Yeah, thanks for that, Mayor. I mean, I think the other thing too here is that it doesn't bother me to, that, to help support communities have strong applications. I think, you know, that's really where we want to get to is having um, lots of very strong competitive applications for programs, whether it's this program or another program that's available. And so I think to that extent, you know, it's in the, the region's interest and CMAP's interest to make sure that we're, again, providing feedback that's valuable to the community um, in regards to a project that could have some some strong benefits for, for their part of the region and the rest of our region too. So thanks for that, Mayor Schilke. Thank you guys for what you're doing in there. You really are bringing some order to this whole process. And uh, I think it becomes clearer and clearer as time goes on that we are a professionally run organization and we are trying, bending over backwards to try to fairly and equally and understandably process all this money and where it goes and what it's going to do. And I think the region's transportation system reflects a lot of enhancement and improvement because of the way we've been running this. So I don't want to see us break away from that. Thank you, Mayor Schalke. Um, Is there any other business for the good of the committee for many of the members? Uh, Cam, I was just going to ask uh, related to the, that last issue. And, and again, I agree Aaron's plan is, is probably the wise approach. Um, but could you also provide us a little bit more information on uh, the GATA provision um that that's applicable here um again i don't think we necessarily need to hang our hat on on, on that um but it is state regulation is uh, probably important to know um uh, but also keep in consideration our our, our procedural um, um processes but but just learning a little bit more about about the specific um provision data that might be affecting this might be helpful too yeah um you know i as we said, we found out about this this morning. And so kind of the gut reaction on, on GATA is, you know, there's a NOFO for a notice of funding opportunity for programs like this, and they have a clear start and end date um, to the, the call for projects. Um, that was also the start and end date was posted with the call for projects information on the CMAP website. And, um, you know, we feel like we're required to, um, abide by that posted start and end date. So I don't know the specific provision off the top of my head and Erin wants to jump I in. I think, well, I was just gonna say, I think we can find it. I think that the other thing too, that's important um, just to share is that I know that both IDOT and CMAP, uh, IDOT um, through their administrative audit process often will get findings for accepting things beyond the date of the, the official notice of funding opportunities closure. Um, and so it becomes sort of an administrative problem isn't exactly the word that I, I want, but we can get that to you. I think that's where some of the concern is uh, in terms of letting in old projects past the the formal posted date. But I recognize that, you know, 
we're talking about your funding too. <laughs> it's better always funding too and wanting to have that go to, you know, appropriate projects too. But we'll we'll get that to you and we can have a discussion further. Any other questions or comments or other business? All right. Hearing none, let's go ahead and move on to public comment. Um, we did not receive any public comment prior to, day, to today's meeting via email. Uh, Mary or Elliot, I don't think there's any request for comment in the chat box, but am I missing anything? I don't see anything. Great, thank you. Um, with that, if anyone in attendance today would like to speak, or if you're furiously typing in the chat box now, please uh, give a wave at your camera or uh, let us know and we will uh, go ahead and recognize you to speak. Also, if there's anyone connected via phone today only and you'd like to make a comment, um, please go ahead and unmute your phone and state your name. Going once, going twice. All right, it doesn't look like anybody um, has any comment to make. So um, with that, our next committee meeting is scheduled for July 1st at 9.30 in the morning. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we expect to be presenting um, with somebody wanting to comment. Okay, looks like it was just an errant unmute there. Um, so uh, at our July meeting, staff will be presenting the uh, staff recommended program at that time for consideration for release for public comment. So with, uh, with no other business, um, uh, as chair, I'll go ahead and, and adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone.